It actually released a short video suggesting various things like turning down the boiler flow temperature, switching off the lights, changing to energy saving bulbs, as well as doing washing on a lower setting and turning off appliances at the wall. It's a 30 second ad. That's what the voiceover of the ad says. It says it's not long, but it's long enough to do something that will save you money on your bills. Well, that seems like very poor uh, advice given the rocketing cost of living. Joining me now is James Melville. He's a political and social commentator. James, very good to see you. David, how are you? I, I'm very well indeed. What do you make of this 30-second advert? Oh, I watched that. It's a, um, I mean, it's like the worst aspects if you had to combine a Richard Curtis advert but with a Ken Loach film at the same time. <laughs> but it's incredibly patronising. It, it, I mean, you know, it's desperately patronising, isn't it? The thing is, everyone knows this already, and, and it's also costing a lot of money. It is. I mean, the government have spent roughly $500 million on public information adverts, largely to do with the pandemic over the last two years. Our taxpayers' money, combined with the fact we're in a cost of living crisis that's gone on for, well, at least a year if you include inflation rises, which has largely been created by the government being asleep at the wheel when they were indulging in two leadership contests and actually not addressing the issues that were coming down the tracks for quite some time in this country. And they have the barefaced cheek to then tell us how to look after our own energy. The other aspect of this is they're framing the energy crisis, both in terms of supply and actually also in terms of prices, on the war. That, I think, is disingenuous at best. The government have cut the storage facilities um, in terms of gas over the last five years, particularly in 2017. We have one of the lowest storage capacities in Europe. So the fault of this crisis is largely the government, yet it is a bit rich for them to patronise us about how to save energy in terms of pricing this winter. Well, I couldn't agree more. And as you rightly say, of course, we don't have gas storage facilities. They haven't built any nuclear power stations. They haven't made a proper decision on fracking. And of course, as you rightly say, they're blaming the war in Ukraine. And I think that is very disingenuous. It's had an impact, but it's not the root cause. It is. There's a number of reasons, but I think the main reason is, well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, there's the quantitative easing element as well. They've pumped in £500 um, billion into the economy over the last two years. That, by very nature, devalues. It has a, a knock-on effect to inflation. But then there's the energy strategy as well. Not just this government, but successive governments haven't produced an integrated energy strategy which combines the aspects of what is the total in the round of what we use for energy supply combined with an effective pricing strategy as well. And so we're at this stage now where we've been talking about inflation and potential energy crisis in terms of prices and also potential blackouts for quite some time. But considering our natural resources on this slab of land, it is unacceptable. And there we have the end product. A bit like with COVID as well, where we are paying the price for government mistakes in terms of response, they have created large aspects of these problems, and yet they patronise us with these ridiculous adverts. I watched that advert. It's not the first time they've done something like that, but it's, there's an element of a little bit of gaslighting involved in this. They are the root causes of these problems, yet they're telling us to effectively mind our behaviour on certain things. And speaking in a language I think is slightly offensive and deeply patronising. Well, it seems extraordinary to me that this is part of an £18 million campaign at a time when they're telling everyone to tighten their belts. How about the government tightening its belt? Yeah, well, it's slightly ironic that, you know, part of the cost of living crisis is and it's not just about in terms of what we're paying, but it's also our overall tax. You know, part as taxpayers, we are funding for their second homes, their energy costs and second homes. Well, you know, maybe we should be turning them to, to turn things down a little bit. But what we effectively want as a taxpayer is an effective government with effective measures to get us through this cost of living crisis, rather than patronising adverts, which ironically are costing us even more money because I presume they're being paid by the taxpayer as well. Well, of course they are. And let me just ask you, James, if I may, and segue into what Candice and I have been talking about at the, at the beginning of the show. It just strikes me that we've seen two murders uh, in the last few days, uh, two murders of very young people in the prime of their lives who were having a great time who went to Christmas parties and it seems to me that the police are not doing their jobs the police themselves feel very hamstrung by what's going on and it feels increasingly like we're living in lawless Britain would you agree yeah but again I mean, again I don't sort of blame the government for everything but on most things at the moment I do blame the government because on every single major issue whether it's to with a yet another cycle of NHS crisis we've talked about the energy crisis 
you know, we've, we're now talking about crime. It is the responsibility of the government to make sure that all these aspects of public sector infrastructures that they're doing something about effectively, not just in the short term by throwing some money. It's not about throwing the money. You have to throw the money effectively to come up with effective measures. And we've not been doing that in this country for a very, very long time. We've had a government that I think have been in power for too long. I think they've got lazy, they've got self-indulgent, and they're not acting in the best interest in terms of what the public want. And in terms of return on investment on our taxes, we're not getting it at the moment. It feels to me that we've got a fag-end government at the end of their administration on, on every single aspect, including crime, the government aren't delivering. Well, James, I couldn't agree more. You've got, a, got an extraordinary situation where you've got the Labour Party, which is to the right of the current Conservative Party, where you've got the highest tax burden in 70 years. I never thought I'd say it. James, very good to talk to you. That's James Melville, who's a political and social commentator. I'm